Well, that's our next focus here this morning, and Dr. Oyedele Oyediji joins us. He's the Registrar Institute of Animal Science. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Well, yes, as shocking and challenging as that situation is, but then there's been several efforts to ensure that peace reigns. In spite of that, you still have this going on. What do you make of the, the, the efforts that has been put in place? Do you think that, what should we be doing differently? Thank you very much. Um, the recent clashes is highly unfortunate. We had relative peace, um, I think, between the chiefs and the uh, housemen after some clashes in the past. We have not heard of um, any clash in that axis again. Um, if you also will remember, there were clashes in Plato State, was a axis, Langtan, and so on which has abated, people have embraced peace. But um, we are taken aback about what has happened or what is happening currently between the Agatus in Benue and the Fulani Haspen. Um, I think a few things are missing. Uh, the issue of extension workers that play a vital role in the traditional dispute resolution institutions uh, comes to play again. This must be resuscitated. We have been receiving a lot of reports, conflicting reports, that um, knowing exactly what the situation is, is a, a little bit difficult for us to assess. And unfortunately, um, we have not been seeing video clips or interview of those on the other side of the conflict to enable um, a proper assessment of what actually instigated the problem, the level of damage on either side, and what has to be done. When you talk about... Um, I've watched them a lot of um, video clips. Okay. Okay, go, go ahead. Well, when you something. say uh, extension workers, you're talking about the aggregate extension agents, and is this in connection with the herdsmen or the farmers? And how? What's the connection? The connection is that the extension agent interfaces with farmers on both sides, either the crop farmer or the husband. We, as animal scientists, act as extension agents more actually on the, the part of those involved in animal agriculture, either cattle rearing, poultry farming, pig farming, fish farming, or whatever it is. And at our interventions with these people, when there is a conflict, we are involved in getting in touch. We give expert opinion to the village heads who settle disputes locally. But uh, today, um, we have challenges in doing that. Animal scientists have not been able to work as they are supposed to do because um, there are institutional problems. Um, in some states, animal, I mean, um, livestock services is mired with veterinary services to the point that um, um, animal husbandry services are being subsumed and those workers are not properly motivated to take the risk of performing their functions, of joining meetings, in resolving conflicts, giving expert suggestions, particularly when there's an encroachment from one side to the other of the conflict. You know what I see? And uh, the traditional dispute settlement institutions are very, very much important because um, our people trust leaders, religious leaders, um, political leaders in the community, and so on. So that is missing. So that is what I mean by saying that um, the, there's a problem in uh, uh, extension services. We uh, ought to have dealt with some of these problems before uh, being excluded. The good thing here is we're talking about this uh, with a view to finding solution to all of this. Uh, I recall it was last year, and uh, we also had you 
on the program trying to see how we can proffer some solutions to this. Must they graze? For instance, you're an expert in animal science at the Institute there. Uh, is there a better way of uh, helping the herdsmen tend their cattle? Of course, yes. Um, if you have been following the Minister of Agriculture, priority of government is the production of fodder because the main source of conflict is competition for land resources, pasture for the cattle, water for cattle. The farmers on their own also need water. In the case of the Agatus, you know, there are people living um, beside uh, the banks of uh, River Benue. They are heavily involved in crop production. And of course, you know that uh, livestock also rely on crop residues along with pasture. So that particular area that is um, lush all year round, obviously will become a target of people looking for how to feed their cattle. But government has realized this and has embarked um, on uh, a program that will ensure adequate fodder. People should grow fodder now as a business. Grow grasses for livestock. So this is in place. And if you also look at it, there has been grazing reserves established across the whole country, purposely to resettle the husband away from nomadism. And it is hoped that there will be cattle ranches in all these places, so that this issue of movement from one place to the other will, over time, abate. Um, the uh, other side of it is that to apply modern technology, animal husbandry, the animals must be confined. It is very difficult to apply any modern animal science technique to, to increase production when the animals are roaming or moving from one place to the other. So if you apply something to them today that uh, has to be repeated in one week and the animals have left for some 50 kilometers away and you don't know when they are going to return, how would that be possible? Hmm. All I'm saying is, is that there must be cattle ranches, particularly promoted by the private sector. It is not possible. I don't think it is possible for the government to establish ranches and run those ranches effectively. So the, the, the states must give incentives for whoever wants to invest in cattle ranching. You know, do, do they, uh, as an extension agent, I mean, they have several commissions, several committees. Do you get invited, you or your group, to some of these meetings or committees to proffer solutions to this challenge? Yes, sometimes we do. But the work of the extension agent is not even to wait to be invited. His primary assignment is to wake up in the morning and he has an itinerary moves into this community, he knows every uh, district head, every herd in his zone of operation. So he doesn't have to wait. And when there's a problem anywhere, he already knows. And he's in contact with um, superior authorities at the headquarters. He collects scientific information to deal with that particular problem, takes to the farmers. So the extension agent is not somebody who sits down uh, like an order taker in the supermarket where people come in and then go and pick their products on the shelf and come back to him and say, hey, yes, I want to buy this and pay. No. He is a salesman that goes out to get orders. He goes out every morning and says, is everything okay here? Oh, fine, we're okay. And then he leaves that place. That is extension services. So as it is now, uh, because you say, look, the private sector has got to come in, they have to stop grazing, there has to be ranches, and some of those other solutions. But what about those who will tell you, no, it's been a tradition to graze, to move from one area to the other. How easy or difficult do you think it would be for them to imbibe some of these solutions that you're suggesting? Thank you very much. Yes, um, it may be a journey of 100 years, but you must start the first year. How come the program succeeded in the Southwest, convincing the husband there to sell us some stock 
and buy their own land. I keep referring to the success of um, extension work at Igbora, where Fulani uh, has been there um, maybe about uh, 15 years or 20 years ago, if I can remember. We are persuaded, convinced that, look, why don't you sell 10 heads of cattle and buy your land, collect your receipt, and that land is forever, eternally, for you and your family. And if you are having uh, five hectares, you have um, 50 heads of cattle. That land can take your animals for grazing, for whatever it is, almost perpetually. So these are issues. It is not something that is impossible to persuade the husband to own their own land. But I think what needs to be done now is to facilitate this process. Maybe the banking institutions will have to come in and look at how to um, arrange for loans and how the states will also issue certificate of occupancies and so on because uh, there's also a challenge here. C of O's are not issued even when you apply. The, the process takes about three or four years and it could be frustrating. States do not issue C of O's easily. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Oyedele Oyediji, we thank you very much for those suggestions. And I think those areas that have tried certain models that has worked, they need to publicize it and, and let people know that, look, this can work. And by the way, we have this extension agent across the country, don't we? Yes, we have them, but um, um, if you go to the states or the local governments, they are barely seen. There are too many challenges they are facing in um, um, executing their job, um, lack of mobility, lack of this, lack of that, um, equipment to work with, documents, you know, the things have changed in the world today. Internet is there, there is so much information going on, but there's the challenge of adequately equipping um, the livestock extension agent, uh, the animal scientist. And they are still even uh, complaining of being suffocated under some other professionals uh, where they are made to work. I think they should raise those issues because uh, the vice president did say, uh, as part of their plans, they, they need or they intend to engage in the extension agent. So perhaps uh, we should follow through on that one. It may uh, help a lot if you do. Well, thank you for talking to us today, Dr. Oyedile Oyediji, Registrar, Institute of Animal Science. Well, that's the show uh, today as well. Thank you very much. We do thank you for your comments. We will be back tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Now I'm Neil Tagbe. Thank you. Many thanks. We hope to get uh, to Senator Ali Ndume to give his own perspective on uh, security in Gaza and uh, what the Vice Chairman has said concerning uh, his uh, uh, relationship with those in Gaza. Many thanks. I'm Suleiman Alede. Uh,